G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be building my own AFL expansion team as though it was coming in in 2024. So the purposes of this video is kind of like a fun exercise where I try and build a competitive best 22. Stealing players from some clubs, having some draft picks as well based on the 2023 draft, trying my best to make it fair with the salary cap. So I've got some rules on the sorts of players I can recruit. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you my best 22. I'd love to have gone to the extent of like coming up with a jumper and like a realistic team name and justification for which state this would be in but it's not really the point of the video it's more like a list building exercise for the sake of argument though let's say my team's called the jesse jaguars oh my god let's say they're based in perth and play at optus stadium because it's ridiculous that there's only one team that hosts optus stadium oh free man will exist don't they okay let's say west coast and jesse jaguars play home games at optus and free man can play their home grounds at coburn arc <laughs> jeez this uh this anti free man banter would land so much better if the west coast weren't the worst team in the league. All right, let's go through the rules. To start off the list build, I'm gonna go with the unsexy pick. So I'm, I'm gonna take two players that weren't drafted last year that I thought should have. I'm allowed three delisted free agents and I can take any retired player from last year as well. And I'm gonna take three players from any club in the league's rookie list. I can just steal them. So that's the lower part of the list build. And then we're gonna get into the juicy stuff. I'm gonna be able to take seven free agents from around the league. Now, for the sake of making this kind of fun, like it's, it's too hard to actually look at who's out of contract this year. I mean, you could, but it would just limit the video so much. So I, I can take any player but there are rules. So like I said, seven free agents that I can poach from any club. I'm allowed to take two players that were in the top five of their best and fairest last year, but they can't have won that club's best and fairest in the last five years. Then I can take two further players that were ranked sixth to 10th in their club's best and fairest. And again, they can't have won the best and fairest at all in the last five years. Then I can take three more players from clubs um, and the rules on for them, they can't have finished in the top 10 of their best and fairest last year. They also couldn't have won the best and fairest at all in the last five years, and they have to have been drafted before 2021. In other words, I can't just steal like the best young talents from clubs. The next part of the list build is I have nine draft picks that I can use. So what we're gonna do is, this isn't necessarily how Tasmania is going to have it when they enter the competition, but I looked at what Gold Coast got and GWS when they entered the competition. So I've got the following draft picks. One, two, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, and 15. And at the end of this video, we're going to do an actual draft based on last year's draft but that's not all i just named nine first round draft picks and i can trade some of those for established players i'm going to trade three of those picks and i'll get to that shortly then after that's all been said and done we're going to do a top 20 of last year's draft man this is nerdy and then at the end i'm going to show you the best 24 i've got because that will give me 24 players and i'll show you what it looks like on the field so it's time to start recruiting players. We're gonna go through it systematically. Uh, before I do though, if you could do me a favor and consider subscribing to this channel, help it grow, that'll be much appreciated. Great, so I'm gonna rattle through some of the lesser lights that I'm gonna steal to build the baseline on my club, okay? So the two undrafted players from last year, gone with Colin Sanchez and Kay De La Rue. Now they're both kind of small half forward types. Both I thought were unlucky enough to get drafted. You don't need to really go in depth. Um, if you follow the draft, you might know who they were. Either way, I just thought those were nice options. Probably the two of the players that I liked the most that didn't get drafted at all. Out of the delisted free agents or retirees, I'm allowed to steal three. I'm gonna take Sam Hayes from Port Adelaide, Anita Ruckman, Hayden Crozier, bit of experience down back, and then I'm gonna pluck a retiree in Isaac Smith. Out of all the retirees, there are a few options, but I feel like he'd probably, you know, even just on a one year contract, he could add something as, in terms of leadership as well as on field. And then the next part of the game is I can steal any rookie listed player from around the competition. Now, this is hard because I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I don't have in-depth knowledge of every club's rookie list, but I'm gonna take James Borlase. He was delisted and re-rookied at Adelaide and he, he's played games. Sam Closey as well from the Gold Coast Suns was on their rookie list, just been drafted out of the VFL, good young talent. And then the third one I was kind of reaching, but I've taken Locke Rawlinson. He plays at the Eagles. I like the look of him, long-term prospect, but there you go. That's the kind of boring side of it out of the way. No disrespect intended to those players, but this is the part we all want to see, right? The, the free agents aspect. One other part that I forgot to mention is out of the seven free agents, I can only take one per club, okay? I can't take them all from the same club. Max one per club. So if you remember, I can take two players that were in the top five of their best and fairest, but haven't won it last year 
or in the previous five years. And uh, there's a little loophole here. Thankfully, Nick Dacos is available to be selected. He's probably going to be close to my biggest uh, marquee signing, closely followed, if not probably exceeded by actually Charlie Kerno for Carlton. He finished third in last year's Best and Fairest and has not won the award. So Nick Dacos and Charlie Kerno come on down. I wanted to grab a, a key position forward and Nick Dacos as well is probably one of the most valued talents in the league. So then I can take two more free agents and uh, the rule here is that they have to have been ranked between 6th and 10th, or potentially lower, in their club's best and fairest last year, and they can't have won the award ever. Those two options for me, I wanted to go tall. I've gone for Noah Bolter, who finished equal 6th in Richmond's best and fairest last year. And, you know, as a swingman, he's a quality key position player, good age bracket at 25 as well. And then Jason Horn Francis, come on down. He came seventh in Port Adelaide's best and fairest last year. Obviously has not finished too high in the best and fairest previously for Port Adelaide. So I have got a great young core here now. Then I can take three more free agents. They can't have finished top 10 in the best and fairest last year. They can't have won the best and fairest in the last five years. And they have to have been drafted before 2021. I've gone with Zach Bailey from the Brisbane Lions who fits this criteria, comes in as a forward midfielder for me. Bailey Smith meets this criteria as well. So come on down, Bailey Smith. I must be pushing the limits of a salary gap by this point, but that's all right. That's all right. And then I wanted a young Ruckman and Kieran Briggs is uh, one of the more promising young Rucks around the league from GWS who kind of had a breakout year last year, long career ahead of him. I need a good Ruck to start this team off. So to summarize, that's Nick Dacos, Charlie Kerno, Noah Bolter, Jason Horn Francis, Zach Bailey, Bailey Smith, and Kieran Briggs. Now, if you remember, it's time to look at our draft picks. Like I said, it's 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. So it's the first three picks, and then every second pick up until 15, and that's basically nine of the first 15 picks. This is crazy. But I'm going to trade three of these first rounders for established players. So clubs actually get this pick, and they will take their picks in the upcoming draft. So of the three, I'm going to prize Logan McDonald out of Sydney. I'm going to give him a top five pick for it. This is, uh, this is where I'm going to get the most people firing back at the value that I'm putting on these players. Maybe five is too much for Logan McDonald. Sydney fans are probably thinking, no, they wouldn't do that. Just humor me. It's an exercise. By the way, I had several comments in my uh, Tasmania hypothetical team video. Give me grief for picking Caleb Zerong because I'm an Eagles fan and therefore I'm stealing Fremantle's best player. I actually thought it was a sign of respect to make Caleb Zerong one of the players that I wanted for my team. It's not real. Chill. It's not real. <laughs> so we got Logan McDonald. So a key pairing of Kerno and Logan McDonald. That's hot to trot. Uh, so then I'm going to look for another key position back and uh, I'm going to give up pick 11 for Jack Buckley. Now, this is pretty steep, I would have thought, but I really do think his value uh, is, is about that. I think he probably is still building up his reputation in the AFL. I wanted a, a rock-solid player. I'd love to go for Sam Taylor. I'm unwilling to give up picks one, two, and three, because don't forget, Harley Reid's in this draft. So pick 11 for Jack Buckley makes sense. And I also wanted a wingman or at least a versatile player who can play on ball, on the wing, and half back. So I'm going to give up pick 13 to Geelong for Max Holmes. So that's Logan McDonald. Jack Buckley and Max Holmes I've just traded first round draft picks for. I have taken two players from GWS, but to clarify, I could only take one free agent per club and I'm actually giving GWS pick 11 for Jack Buckley as well. So it is time for the draft. Now I've had a crack at redrafting the draft with all the picks that I have, with all the picks that I've just traded and try and get in the heads of uh, every club in the league on the clock in this scenario. So I'll rattle through a top 20 pretty quickly and you can see what I've got. So I've still got pick one. I'm going to take Harley Reid. At pick two, I'm going to bid on Jed Bolter. He's going to be matched by the Gold Coast Suns. I've then got picks three and four. I'm going to go exactly what North did with Colby McKercher and Zane Dersma. I did consider Daniel Curtin because I need a key back, but I decided to go for Dersma because he adds something to this list that I don't quite have yet. West Coast then with the actual pick one, I will take Daniel Curtin in this scenario. Sydney now have this pick because I traded this pick for Logan McDonald and they take Nick Watson. North then have their uh, pick seven and eight, which were three and four in reality. And they end up with Sanders and Caddy, who I think are you know great players. I bid on Ethan Reid. He gets matched by the Gold Coast Suns. And that allows me to take a key position back. And I'm lucky that he slipped this far in Connor O'Sullivan. Hawthorne then pounce on Caleb Windsor. GWS will always go on Phoenix Goddard so they can have him again. Then the Bulldogs bid on Jake Rogers, the um, academy prospect for them. Then they take Darcy Wilson before Geelong bids on Jordan Croft. With their live pick, Geelong take Will. 
Green, who originally went to Sydney. Melbourne end up with Colton Falstrup anyway. I want a young Ruckman on the list, so I take North Melbourne's Taylor Goad. Adelaide end up with James Leake. And then for pick 20, this one gave me con some consternation, if you will, but I wanted a small forward to add to what I've already got. So I've reached a bit for Lance Collard. I did like him in his draft. And again, this is my team. I can just pick whoever I want, but this is who I'd pick for the team that I'm assembling. Great. So let's finish off by showing you the best 24. I'll, I'll do an extended bench. So there's six on the bench and you can see how this team shapes up. So in the back line, we've got Dacos with Buckley and Bolter as the key backs and Borlase is kind of a third tall. McKercher will slot into this team in that halfback role that he's currently playing and Crozier is there for a little bit of mature experience as well, small defender. So the center line is good as well. Max Holmes and Isaac Smith, a couple of Geelong players. They're on the wings. Jason Horn francis I'm going to give the keys to to start in the on-ball division. Kieran Briggs tapping it down to Bailey Smith and Harley Reid. I'm chucking him straight in the guts. The forward line is good as well. You've got uh, two talls in Kerno and McDonald. And Sam Hayes, I'm going to put him as a third tall forward. Again, obviously the weak link in this team. Uh, but then you've got some medium types in Dersma, uh, or at least one medium type truly. And then Zach Bailey, a bit of a smaller medium type. Lance Collard can push up into a wing as well. So there's a good balance there. And I've got two rucks in the team, which I like. Then you look at the extended bench, and you've got your types like Sam Closey, Taylor Goad, Connor O'Sullivan, Kate Delarue, Cohen Sanchez, and Locke Rawlinson. So obviously the, the quality drops off, but I've spent big. I've spent a huge chunk of my salary cap, and I don't know how realistic this is. Probably not. But, but I found that quite fun. This is just a fun experiment of trying to build the best team you can under some arbitrary rules that you made up. But maybe let me know in the comments, like what are some other rules that I could do? Like if you enjoyed this, maybe I do it again with different rules. Help me fine tune that. This team would be very, very competitive, I think, uh, when you consider some of the best young talents in the league. Uh, maybe it's a little bit OP. Who knows? But like I said, let me know in the comments and feedback and you know, we can maybe do this again. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. It was a bit of fun making it. So thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.